Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right. Hey, everybody. It is Jay Crater. I am recording this on March 16th on Monday. It's about 1015. And we're going to cover some uh, news stories, news stories that are not having to do with the coronavirus. So I found one, two, three, four, five stories that are not about the coronavirus. And uh, I want to just keep you up to date because everybody's been talking a lot about the coronavirus and uh, rightly so. And I just recorded a podcast where I shared everything I thought drivers could do to, uh, to thrive in this crisis and protect themselves and stay safe. But today we're going to look at some other stories, some other things that are going on in the news. So here's a story from CNET.com. Uber drivers are losing their jobs over fake DUI complaints. It says Uber and Lyft have rules to keep riders safe from drunk and reckless driving. Customers may be abusing them to get free rides. So basically, what's happening here is uh, passengers, passengers, um, (laughs) in order to get a free ride, they're going to say, hey, you know what? My driver seemed a little intoxicated and uh, I didn't feel safe. And then uh, Uber or Lyft will give them that ride. They'll say, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll not charged for that ride. And then they'll take very, very swift action to deactivate a a driver. And um, that's it. You know, that's ridiculous. Uh, But that's how it happens. I mean, I've had in 26,700 rides, I have had three passengers who complained about my driving and they flat out lied. One woman said I let her off in the middle of the street. No, she was just angry because I didn't drive her an extra half a block, um, but I had other passengers to consider. Um, somebody uh, said I went through a red light. Did not. It was yellow. I never went, never went through a red light. And then there was uh, a third one I don't recall. But they, but just, just based on the fact that the passenger complained, I got this very strongly worded uh, email from very threatening from uh, Lyft, you know, saying we take this very, very, you know, what do you have to say about this? And they just immediately take the side of the passenger. And uh, even though I've driven for them for four years, even though I've got a 5.0 rating, doesn't matter. They take the side of the uh, passenger. Uh, and it's, it's, uh, it's brutal. So this guy... Uh, it says Uber drivers are losing their jobs over fake DUI complaints. So somebody saves fifteen or twenty dollars, and somebody loses his his uh, source of earning revenue, and um, it's not right. It's not right. Uh, so to all the passengers who do that, yeah, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> and uh, and then uh, yeah, as drivers, we just have to be really really careful, really careful. You can kind of sense when somebody's upset. Um, if I look back, uh, I can I can kind of sense something was off with two of those passengers who who made the complaint. You know, like they were having a bad day and they wanted to kind of lash out at somebody. And I didn't really read the cues well, so I'll put some of the blame on myself. Um, here I'll, I'll give you a quote from um, this. 
While passengers may save a few dollars, drivers face temporary or permanent deactivation, said Bryant Greening, an attorney who represents uh, riders and drivers in accident and injury claims for Chicago-based firm Legal Rideshare. He noted that he gets calls from Uber and Lyft drivers about false accusations daily. They lose the ability to work, earn money, and provide for their families, all because a passenger scammed the system. Yeah, I guess that about sums it up. So uh, I got no tolerance for people that lie, especially when it impacts drivers' revenue. Uh, drivers have families. Drivers have kids to take care of. Drivers have, you know, all sorts of responsibilities. And because some scumbag says, you know, I'm just going to save $15 by saying my driver uh, wasn't safe or my driver was intoxicated, it's just utter bullshit. So I think I've <laughs> said enough about that. Interesting. Next article is from a company called Oil Price, and it says uh, Uber's green competitor is riding a 30 million mega trend. So there's a company called FaceDrive. Never heard of them before. But here's what FaceDrive does. They're up in Canada. And what they do is when you take a ride with FaceDrive, you're also planting a tree. So that's the deal. If you take a ride with Face Drive, every ride you take plants a tree in Canada. Um, so it's a, it's an interesting idea, isn't it? So you're you're basically kind of making yourself carbon neutral because every time you you take a ride, uh, and this company then becomes very very uh, attractive uh, because people are all about the green, all about the protecting their planet. It says here, this is an ethics squeeze worth billions. Jeff Bezos, the richest man on the planet, just committed a whopping $10 billion to a global earth fund. Larry Fink, the CEO of BlackRock, one of the world's largest head funds, which is based in San Francisco, um, told CEO, CEOs around the, wor the world last month that climate change has become a defining factor in companies' long-term prospects. Uh, that, that, he said, would lead to a significant reallocation of capital, and it's going to happen a lot sooner than anyone previously expected. So um, it's interesting. So good, good idea on this uh, for this company. Um, there's another article in, on uh, FinancialPost.com. FaceDrive, the first Canadian peer-to-peer eco-friendly rideshare network, is pleased to announce that it has achieved significant month-over-month -month gro growth in number of requested and completed rides during fiscal. 2019. FaceDrive has also continued to demonstrate its commitment to environmental sustainability by teaming up with Forest Ontario to plant 1,131 trees in Ontario during the last quarter of 2019 and a total of 3,226 trees in 2019 alone. FaceDrive currently offers its rideshare network to drivers and riders in multiple cities within Ontario, uh, that's Canada, with the expansion plans into other provinces of Canada such as British Columbia and Alberta, as well as select cities in the United States and Europe, starting from the second quarter of 2020. So that's uh, interesting. So we'll keep an eye on that for you. All right. Next story. Uber and Lyft, their stocks are tanking, tanking. Shares of Uber Technologies and Lyft are off more than 10% in pre-market trading Monday as the panic over the no novel coronavirus continues. Uber said over the weekend that it would give sick leave to drivers who were diagnosed with the coronavirus, but concerns remain about the attractiveness of the ride-hailing business during the crisis. Uh, an Uber driver from Queens was recently found to have the coronavirus. A Lyft executive said last week that the company has seen no negative impact on demand from the coronavirus, but Uber's chief executive disclosed the company's airport business was slowing. That's correct. That's, that makes sense. Um, Lyft stock is, is off 28% over the past month, and Uber has shed 22%. Well, the whole stock market has tanked. Um, but remember when these companies started, you know, uh, I think Uber started around 40, 45 when it uh, went public, and now it's at 20. And Lyft, Lyft started around 72. And uh, it's set, I think, yeah, I think it was 72 because I bought it. Um, I bought like $1,000 worth of it. And then I got to sell it at like 75 and now it's 20. So how far they have fallen, huh? How far they have fallen. All right, now this last story uh, is quite interesting. And what basically what it, it's a, 
Let me find the title of the story. Uh, all right. My internet's getting a little... It says, blind man successfully prosecutes fifth, five, fifth Uber driver after filming him refusing to allow his guide dog in the car. Uh, this is from comics, comicsands.com. Uh, and uh, there's a picture there of, uh, so what he, he films the whole thing because this has happened to him many, many times. And I don't know how assaholic as a driver you have to be to, to see a blind man with his dog and tell him you can't put, you can't take him in your car. I mean, that's just bullshit, right? I mean, am I missing something here? You're a driver. You can see, and then there's a guy who cannot see, and you're saying, no, I cannot give you a ride because it's too much of an inconsideration. You know, it's, 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 I don't want your dog in my car. Dogs don't carry the coronavirus. I mean, so I got to say that all five of those drivers got what they, got what they deserved. Um, when I see somebody with a dog, I'm like happy. I'm like, yeah, come on in. In fact, you can stay out of the car. Just bring the dog in, you know? Dogs are great. You know, they just like look out the window and uh, usually they'll let you pet them and uh, they sit on their owner's lap or they sit on the floor. They're not much of a mess. And uh, even if the dog smells a little bit, I got my osium and I'll just spray a little after the dog leaves. I love dogs. Um, so here's, here's, here's the interaction. Um, as soon as the driver saw Colin, so Colin's the blind guy, he said, I'm going to pass you to another driver. I ain't going to take your dog. And then the, the blind guy said, Colin, he said, uh, it's my car, mate. All right. It's Colin's a nice, almost sounds like a, something you'd say in Australia. Um, responding, uh, Colin said, it might be your car, but, but you sign up to a specific agreement with Uber. The law states you are not allowed to refuse a guide dog. So that's the law. You know, you, you're not supposed to do that. Um, and the driver insisted, the driver insisted he has the power to refuse to take him and then drives off, leaving Colin and Sid, Sid is the dog, standing on the pavement uh, without a ride to his father's house. Okay, this, this is in England. This has taken place in England. And then what, uh, what Colin says, what angered me most this time is the driver was so blatant in his refusal. Sometimes drivers give medical or religious reasons, but this was the most blatant refusal I'd ever had. He didn't have a reason. I told him I'd report him, and he said he didn't want a dog in his car. So, look, if you don't want a dog in your car, don't be a driver. Simple as that, you know? And I got to also say that... Um, these these guys these the people who've gotten in my car who are sight impaired blind are just amazing people. It, just think about what they've gone through in their life to not have not have vision, and uh, you know they have they my experience you know with about probably twenty blind people I've had in my car over my career is they're all just phenomenal. They're they're warm. They uh, are very talkative. Uh, they have these great dogs, and they don't mind talking uh, you know to you. They're not going to be looking at their phones. Like so many people are, um, so it's just a gift, really, when you get somebody with their dog. Um, we're, we're creating a a uh, what's called Maxima Ride, Rideshare Profits, a new training course with the Rideshare guy. Uh, Harry and I are putting together a whole bunch of uh, really great cutting edge videos, and uh, I did one about challenges on the road, and one of the challenges is you know uh, animals, and I said you just cannot not take somebody who's got a dog. Um, it's the law. So uh, it is the law. So um, I'm glad this guy, Colin, uh, is, is uh, holding people accountable. Okay. Um, he added one other thing. He said, other drivers have said they are allergic to dogs, but they must have a valid medical exemption certificate. One driver said he was going to pull over to show me his certificate and then just drove off. Colin said the pre four previous pr prosecutions also involved Uber drivers, but has defended his continued use of the app after he said social media users had criticized him. It's just crazy. It's just pretty crazy. Um, he says, I feel like I'm standing up for the disabled people and guide dog owners. I want to show that we won't tolerate this behavior and we will stand up to it. So great, great, great for you, Colin. I'm behind you. If uh, you're ever uh, uh, in San Francisco and I pick you up, it'll be great uh, to talk to you. All right, that's some news. That's some good news. That's some non-corona 
virus news for you today. All right. So that's a wrap. Fist bump to all you drivers out there. You guys rock it every single day, especially during this somewhat challenging and uh, time in transition. So I honor you. Thank you for sharing your journey with me. If you got a story you want to share, uh, go to uh, nomadj.com, click on contact, send me a little note, and uh, tell me what you'd like to talk about on the podcast, and I'd love to uh, to bring you on. You can also email me at jay at nomad, jay, nomadj.com, j at nomadj.com. This is Jay Crater, Nomad J saying, this episode is in the can. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps, and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.